Okay, welcome. We're back to Google Tools, and I'm at the Google homepage, and I am signed in. My name is up in the right corner, and right now we're going to look at Google Drive. We've already looked at Gmail, and Google Drive is probably one of the most powerful applications that Google has created. Um, let's get started. I will click on Google Drive. And this is what Google Drive looks like. The easiest way to explain Google Drive, Google Drive is a hard drive in the cloud that you can save your documents on and access them from any computer or phone with an internet connection. So you don't have to carry around a flash drive or carry around a CD or anything like that. Over on the left where you say see create, this is much like Microsoft Office. This is like Microsoft Word where I can create a document. This is like PowerPoint where I can create a presentation. This is like Excel where I can create a spreadsheet. This is a form I can create that can interact with the websites where people, I can create a form, embed it, people fill out the fields in the form and they're sent to me in a spreadsheet. This is creating drawings. This is where I can create a folder to keep my documents. And there's even more. I can create a table, a script. We're not going to focus on this too much. That's a little advanced. We're going to start with documents. Now, I can create a document by clicking Create Document. And it looks just like Microsoft Word. And I can type in here, My Document. All the changes have been saved. As I type, the document is saved as I type, so you don't ever have to worry about saving it. Up here, right now, the document is untitled. If I want to change the title, I click here, and I can give the document a title. My document. Okay, now it has a title. If you want to go back to your list of documents, you go to the title, and an arrow appears. Here is my list of documents. And this is the one that I just typed, my document. If I click on it, I go back to my document I just typed. Now this has, uh, just like Microsoft Word, it has text formatting, insert an image, all this stuff here but it also has some other cool features. Under File, create a new document or whatever you would like to create. Open a document. I could rename this document. I can make a copy of this document. If I've changed this document over several days or weeks or years, I can see all the past revisions I've made to this document. I could translate the document into different languages. I could download this document in different formats, download it to my computer, because right now it is up on the cloud. I could publish this document as a web page so that people can click a link and go directly to this document. I can email it to other people that I've allowed to edit the document. I can email it as an attachment, page setup, print. We'll get into this stuff in a minute. Editing, if you ever make a mistake, undo, redo, paste. Let's see, view. I could do a document view. I could show the rulers. Here's the rulers. I could show an equation toolbar. I could do equations if you're doing math. Um, I can make the controls smaller or full size. I can make it full screen. If you get stuck in full screen, press escape, and you'll go back to regular view. I can insert an image. I can insert a link, an equation, a drawing. I can insert a comment, a footnote, page numbers. I can insert page numbers. Lots of stuff here. You're going to have to play with this to see what, what you like, what you don't like. 
format. This is your basic formatting of the text. Tools, and I'm going to show you a very cool tool, one of many cool tools in Google Documents. Research. If I'm typing a paper and I want to look up information as I'm typing, I click Research, and over here I have a Google Search window. So say I'm typing and I go, oh, I have to type about the mayor of Chicago. Who is the mayor of Chicago? Mayor of Chicago. There you go. Mayor of Chicago. I can insert a link to this, art this article. I can cite this article if I need to cite it for a professional paper. If I see an image, I can click on it and drag it right into the document. It makes it very easy to do research. Can you imagine if they had this when you and I were in school? It'd be amazing. Let's show you what it looks like if I cite an article. It puts a little footnote and the article has a citation at the end. It'll say number one, it'll say where that was received, the source. If I insert a link, there's a link to this article. So this is under tools and research. It's very helpful. There's also a definition, the word count. You can translate the document. Preferences. Um, say you're trying to type fractions and you put five slash six, it'll turn it into a fraction if you would like it to. Um, Those are preferences you have to decide if you want. A table, I can insert a table into the document. It's pretty much just like Microsoft Word, except it is saved on the cloud. Now I'll show you some other features. Now say I have this document and I want to share it with somebody. Over here you'll see share, there's a lock on it, because right now, by default, everything I create is private only to me and no one else can see it. But if I hit share, I have some privacy options. If I want someone to look at this article, I want it to send it to a professor if I'm a student, or if I want to send it to a colleague at work, I could email them this link. If I want to share it with more than one person, I could hit change next to private and I could share it with anyone that has the link can look at it or I could make it public so anyone on the internet can search and find it. Anyone can view it. Anyone with the link can view it. I can also say anyone can comment on it or anyone can edit it. Now this is for collaboration. If you have five people all working on a project, you can put anyone with a link can edit it and only send the link to the five collaborators you have. I'm going to keep it as anyone with the link can view it. And then you hit save. Okay, anyone who has a link can view it. Here's the link. I can send it via Gmail or Facebook or Google Plus or Twitter. I could also enter the names of people I want to share it with. If I don't know their addresses, I could choose the people from my contacts, my Gmail contacts, who I want to share it with. Um, I could send a copy to myself. I could paste the item right into the email that I send to them. Instead of a link, it could be an actual uh, copy of the item right in the email. This sharing feature is very helpful. At first, I didn't know if I would ever use it. I use it all the time now. This is how I collect homework in my classes. And in college, it's how a lot of professors collect work. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the list. Just go to the title and go back. Click this arrow. And now in my list, you see I have a lot of documents in here. There are two ways to view them. I could view them, these squares that I'm looking at now, or I could view a list of the documents I have. Some of them are spreadsheets, some of them are Microsoft Word, some of them are 
Google Documents. I also have PDFs, all different types of documents. I can sort them by the title, by the last modified, however I'd like. Okay, now I'm going to go over here, My Drive. I have a lot of folders. And if I click on the folder, these documents are in the 2012 Spring folder. I have five documents in this folder. I have all these documents in this folder. So you can create a folder and organize your documents. Okay, let's see. Uh, sometimes if someone shares a document with you, it will open in your Google Drive. And then you'll have a copy of that shared document in your Google Drive, but you won't be able to edit it because it's only shared with you. Unless they shared it with you and allowed you to edit it. Now, this button is also very important. It is the upload button. Let's say, for example, I have a document on my desktop that I want to put up into the cloud. I can click upload, upload a file or a whole folder, I'll say a file, and I can choose a file from my computer. Let's see, I'll look in my documents, try to find a Word file. There's a Word file and I'll open it. Now it is uploading it and it finished. Now you see the W next to it. It uploaded this file. However, it's not in Google Docs format. When I click on the file, it is in a Microsoft Word format. So I'm not really able to edit it. But I could export it to Google Document, which means it converts it to an editable document. And now I can edit the document. So this is how you get files that you've already created up into Google Documents, so you don't have to carry them around on a flash drive. You can have them up in the cloud available to you whenever you need it. Okay, I'm going to go back to my list. Okay, now if I click on more here, I can look at all my items, I can look in the trash, I can also look at items sorted by their type or their owner. Sometimes I'm looking for a spreadsheet I made and I can't find it, so I'll say, let me just look at all the spreadsheets. Here's all the spreadsheets I have. Or let me just look at all of the... PDF files I have. There they are. So that's a basic run through of Google Documents. I'll go into it a little more, but it's been a long presentation and I think we both need a break. Hope you learned something. I'll be back.